Hi everyone. Welcome to Creative Storytelling Workshops, an LA County Library virtual event in partnership with the LA County Museum of Art. I'm Christina, East Regional Youth Services Coordinator at LA County Library, and I'll be your host today. Before we begin, we wanted to make a quick introduction to one of our resources for parents and caregivers with one of our positive parenting librarians. Hello, my name is Yvonne and I'm a positive parenting librarian with LA County Library. Before we get started, I would like to tell you a little bit about how LA County Library can support your parenting needs. I have been accredited by a research-based positive parenting program to provide tips and resources to help you with your child's behavior. These tips include topics such as encouraging creativity, supporting your partner, and balancing work and family. I'll be available during the program to answer questions in the chat, as well as for 10 minutes after the program. You can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a positive parenting librarian. These consultations are available in both English and Spanish. I have posted the link for scheduling a consultation with us in the chat. You will also be able to find this link in the email that will go out after the program. Thank you so much and I look forward to chatting. Thank you so much for telling us about all the wonderful resources for parents and caregivers, Yvonne. Continuing with today's program, exploring the theme of cultural identity, librarian Matt will be reading the book, Yo Soy Muslim, a father's letter to his daughter for us, followed by an art activity led by LACMA teaching artist, Katie, and moderated by Susie. There are some materials for the art activity today that we posted in the registration, but we're going to put it in the chat right now, just in case. So if you have those around, please make sure you get them ready so you can follow along. Thanks for waiting. Sorry, coming from the beautiful Children's Theater of West Hollywood Library. I'll be reading uh, Yo Soy Muslim by Mark Gonzalez, and this is read with permission from Simon and Schuster. It has been said, if you climb a tree to the very top and laugh, your smile will touch the sky. If you stay there overnight, you will learn to count stars like dreams. Inside cities where skyscrapers cloud the view of everything above, walk in the steel shadows, remembering Mayan pyramids that too lived amongst the heavens. There are questions we all ask when we are learning what it means to be human. Who invented my hands? Why wasn't I born with wings? And does the moon ever get lonely? There are questions this world will ask. What are you and where are you from? And there will come a day when some people in the world will not smile at you. On that day, tell them this, Yo soy Muslim, I am from Allah, angels, and a place, um, place almost as old as time. I speak Spanish, Arabic, and dreams. Mi mama creates life. Mi abuelo worked the fields. My ancestors did amazing things, and so will I. No matter what they say, know you're wondrous a child of crescent moons, a builder of mosques, a descendant of brilliance, an ancestor in training. Say it with me, yo soy Muslim. Our prayers were here before any borders were. Yo soy Muslim, and the deserts hold the secrets of souls. Yo soy Muslim, hummingbirds send blessings with their wings. Yo soy Muslim. If you listen closely to the drum, you can hear God. Dance, smile, laugh, pray. Say it with me. Yo soy Muslim. Yo soy Muslim. Are those who dance with the wind, smile at the sun, laugh in the rain. And pray. Thank you all. Thank you so much for that wonderful reading, Matt. So now we'll switch gears to our arts workshop. 
So I'll hand it over now to our friends over at LACMA. Uh, well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for for joining and um, and just for putting this together. Um, that story was was really lovely. I love the the message, um, that kind of poetic message about you know being proud of who you are, where you come from, um, you know the stories that came before, um, the people, ancestors, and and also that message of bravery and empowerment through that kind of journey of self discovery which is going to tie a bit into the art that we're going to be doing. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can express, you know, your culture, your identity through art. And, uh, you know, it can it could be painting, it could be photography, it could be film, it could be, um, you know, a, a story and, and illustrations like this beautiful book we just heard. Um, and it can also be through clothing. And so what we're going to be doing is looking at a work of art uh, and we're going to be creating our own we're going to be looking at a work of art uh, for inspiration and creating our own kind of um, inspired little head pieces that uh, are going to be either for yourself or for for someone that uh, inspires you. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over. To share my screen with you. So as I'm going along, uh, please feel free to write in the chat if you have any questions about the art or about the process. Um, but I wanna give you a little time to, uh, to just make sure you've got your materials that we're gonna work with today. So we're gonna be working with um, two pieces of white paper and then scotch or masking tape. So any kind of tape you have, some scissors and then any kind of colors uh, you wanna add. So, um, Let's see. So does everybody, so again, feel free to write in the chat. Uh, do you need a little time to gather your materials? Feel free to, or I can just, I'll, I'll just keep going. I'll give you like, I'll, I'll give about a minute just to kind of get settled with your materials. Um, let's see, I am going to, so yeah, you can use colored pencils, you can use markers, crayons, and any kind of tape or you can also use uh, some glue too and katie we have a question is it yeah. is just regular white white printer paper okay exactly yep just two pieces of regular white printer paper And then, yeah, if you if you do want to add add glue, it could be a glue stick is fine, um, but tape will do just fine as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the artwork. So feel free to add any details that you um, notice in this. So, so what we're looking at is. Um, this is a beaded crown, it's a beaded headpiece from West Africa. This is from the Yoruba people, the Yoruba culture of West Africa, uh, specifically Nigeria. And um, I would love, you know, feel free to comment on any details you notice um, as we go along. So Ev, you can see that everything here is very uh, detailed. There's there's colors, there's patterns, there's symbols, and, and I'm seeing somebody chat, there are two oval, ah, so somebody's noticing kind of a face, something that resembles eyes. Yeah, what else do you notice in this work of art? Ah, beaded show pieces like this in India too, so this is, yeah, you're talking about different cultures. Any other comments you want to share of some things you notice? All right, yeah, so so somebody mentioned there's a face, um, the interesting shapes, patterns, symbols, and and yeah, so everything in here kind of has a, a special meaning. So the symbols, the the colors, the patterns, um, in this crown, all share a special meaning to the culture. They represent qualities and themes such as 
divinity, uh, royalty, ancestry, protection, tranquility, um, and balance. And the idea is, you know, the wearer of the crown is kind of protected by um, by this artistry within it, by the kind of spiritual medicine within it. So what I would love for, for you to do when we work on our art is kind of think about um, if you were to create a your own kind of crown or headpiece, which is what we're going to be doing, for somebody, uh, think about who this might be. And kind of going back on the story, think about, you know, who might you want to gift a work of art to remind them to be proud of who they are, to, um, to, to show them what inspires you about them. So these are some examples you'll see a little bit more and I'm going to take you step by step through the process and again think about you know the, the symbols the patterns the details you would add to to your work of art as we go along and I'm going to take you step by step okay now I'm going to switch over my camera Okay, so I'm gonna put these aside here. Use this for inspiration. Um, so what we wanna do is start off with two pieces of paper side by side, um, and you want them to be, you want them to be uh, what we call, this is a, portrait you know if you have it like this it would be landscape we want it portrait so vertical and just have them side by side and you want the, the edges to touch okay and then what you're going to do is grab uh, just a couple pieces of tape to start because it's it's a little bit hard to tape the whole thing all at once so just to start maybe Hold it as best as you can and then put a little piece of tape at the bottom and a little piece of tape at the top just to hold it in place. And then, again, if you have any questions, please ask in the chat as we go. So then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to tape this whole line right in the, the to tape these two pieces together and I really want to make sure there's tape on all of it I don't want to leave any gaps so I'm going to grab this time a really long piece trim off any extra right to the edge of the paper and then I'm just going to trim off any extra here All right. So are we getting anyone? Does everybody uh, need, a, need a little more time with that stuff? Just taping the pieces together? Sometimes it's a little tricky when it moves around. All right. So what we're going to do next, we've got the paper. So this, the first step, I'm just going to do step by step, and then you're going to have free reign. Um, then... You're gonna take the bottom corner, it really doesn't matter whether it's this corner or this corner, and you're gonna fold it, you're gonna make a triangle, and you're gonna take it all the way to the top line here, and then crease it down. Okay, just wanna see, we got a triangle here. Okay, so we've got that. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna trim off the rest of this paper and we can use this later. So I'm actually gonna stand up for this. All 
All right, so what you should have is this big, huge triangle right now. And when you open it, it's gonna be a square. Okay, so we've got a square. All right, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the bottom and you're just gonna fold it up to the top so that you're folding it in half. Like a hot dog. Okay. Please tell me if I'm going too fast or if, if anyone needs to slow down. <laughs> Okay, so now what we're gonna do, I've got to fold it in half, we're gonna take the bottom corner. Um, doesn't really matter which corner you start with, I'm gonna start with the bottom right corner. And you're gonna fold that up to the top and crease that. And then you're gonna do the exact same with the other side. So now we've got this kind of upside down triangle here. And you can actually flip it around so that it should be kind of all open at the bottom. And I'm gonna show you a way to tape on the inside because this is gonna be the outside. Um, you can also put, if you've got scotch tape, you can put the tape just right over the top too. But a way you can do it on the inside is just to grab a piece of tape. Again, you want it to be long because you want to be sure that the tape is covering all of it. And then you can place it with the sticky side up and you can just lie it down right in the middle of your triangle here and it's gonna wanna stick to your fingers, which is fine. You just lie it down, kind of balance it there, and then fold your pieces down right on top of the tape. You kind of hold the tape in place, makes it a little easier. And now there's no tape on the, on the top, but you can just put tape over the top if that's easier. Okay. So now this is where we can start being creative and you can start thinking about, um, do you want this to be um, for yourself? Do you want this to be for somebody else? And how can this piece, this headpiece you're gonna uh, create, how can it be an expression of, um, sorry about this sound, how can it be an expression of, you know, if it's for you, your, your culture, your identity, what inspires you, um, or if it's for someone else, you know, the, the going back to this work of art here. So somebody brought up the faces and the, the faces were kind of, are kind of a symbol of um, royal ancestry. And the idea is that, that uh, this is kind of a guide uh, and a, a protector for the person wearing the crown. So when you're creating yours you know thinking about who this might be for think about you know when they put this on um maybe they'll feel protected or or maybe you can add drawings or shapes on them that will you know be a, a gift for this person and they'll feel inspired and protected so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fold this in half so you've got your line there i'm just going to fold it in half i'm going to show you a way to kind of start to make patterns and shapes just for through cutting. So, and Katie, we yeah. have someone asking if you can go back to the beginning. To the very beginning? Of, I believe so. I think. Um, no. Hold on. I think they're typing right now. Oh yeah. Like the tape part. Okay, so just when we were taping right in here. Mm -hmm. So you know what I would do is if the tape part's a little challenging. Um, because I put the tape on the inside and that might be a little tricky. What I would say is if you 
really whatever kind of tape you have, because this is going to be the back anyway. Oh, I think they a... mean taping the, the sheets of paper together. Oh, okay. Um, sure, let's see. So you're just going to grab, like, grab two more sheets here. Paper. So what you're going to do is you're just going to, um, two pieces of paper like this, and then you're going to put them side by side, and you're going to run a whole line of tape to uh, attach these together. So that's how we're going to do the tape. And I'll do it really quickly, just so you can kind of see what you do next. So all of this will be taped. And then you're going to fold this up like this to create a, a triangle. After you tape it. And what you're doing is you're creating a square. So then you're going to cut this off and create a square here. Okay, and then we're going to fold it like this. And then you're going to fold this piece up and this piece up and then tape that middle. So it goes from a square to a rectangle to a triangle. Okay, so I'm going to continue on and Basically, what I'll do is I'll just get you all started, and then anyone who has questions about this process, we can go through that again. Um, so what we're going to do next, we've got our triangle, then we're going to fold it in half. And, and now you can create shapes around all of the edges with just from cutting. So um, the main thing when you cut out your shapes is you don't want any of the shapes to touch. That's the most important thing. So I'll show you what I, I mean. And this is kind of, we're just starting the decorating. So your shapes can be curved. They can be, um, you can kind of start thinking about, you know, adding any sort of symbols. Now this is going to be, um, it's going to look different when you open it up. But you notice how none of my shapes are touching. So they're all, they all have space in between. That's really important. And you can even cut the top here if you want. And then you can cut this side. You can cut all, you can even cut the bottom. I'm keeping my shapes pretty small, just to have room to draw. And now you can also cut the very bottom. And you can even save all these little shapes if you want. You might be able to use them later. All right, so again, notice how there's spaces in between. None of them are touching. And what's going to happen is then you're going to open it. I'm going to make this the back because it has this uh, line through it. So I'm going to flip it over. So now you can see you've got this design already started. It's starting to look like this sort of headpiece. Something you can wear on your head like a crown. And now you can start thinking about what you're going to draw. You can think about um, this individual that you would like to give this to. What's, you know, how can you remind them to be proud of who they, who they are? What inspires you about them? Or maybe this is for yourself. Think about what inspires you. Think about your culture. 
And then you can grab any of your coloring materials. And this is where we're just going to be creative and you're, you're going to draw. You can even, you know, I see that this is kind of a diamond symbol. So you can think about, well, how could I expand off that? Maybe try doing the same thing on one side that you do on the other, which is called symmetry. And Katie, we have someone who doesn't understand how to cut it and, and would like to see that again. So whenever yes. you get the chance, do that. Uh, thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. OK. So I'm going to put this aside. And so are you talking about from this point when it was folded? Is that right? Let's see. So in terms of cutting it, yeah, you just want to let's go back to over here so folded our paper in half and we folded it here put a piece of tape here and then we we're going to fold it again here so from this point put a piece of tape down the middle So to, to start to cut the shapes out, what you want to do is just fold the whole triangle in half. So it's nice and thick. And then you just grab your scissors and you're really just making any kind of shapes you want along just the edges. So you can do along, along this side, this side, and the bottom. And the only rule is that none of your shapes touch and what I mean by that is when I do my next shape I want to leave a space instead of you know doing something like this I just want to leave a space between each shape does that kind of make sense for whoever was asking was that your question and then leaving a space between and then the bottom as well and then that way when you open it, it's kind of like a snowflake I don't know if anyone's ever created a snowflake but it's a similar similar type of exercise and would it be possible to show that portion more slowly? Sure. So just from here? I think that the cutting, yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of the shapes, like you're creating your own. So I'm just doing examples, but you're creating your own shapes, whatever they are. They can be triangles, they can be circles, they can be any any kind of shapes you want. So there's, you know, you don't, certainly don't have to follow along with the shapes that I'm doing. That's really important. These, these are your own made up shapes and they can look however you want them to, to do. So I am just cutting out all of the paper here on the edges and leaving a space between each one. So you can do triangles, you know, and another way you can do it. Um, if you'd like, is, is while the triangle's open like this. So you could also just cut out shapes with it open too. And it's still gonna work. It's still gonna open into a headpiece. So you can do it open or closed. You do it closed, it's just gonna double it. So it's just gonna save you a little time. So yeah, then we can just continue drawing using colors. Um, and again, you know, these are your own. I'm doing this version, but yours is gonna be completely your own. This is totally original. So the idea isn't to follow along with what I'm doing. These is just 
completely come up with your own design, your own colors, your own shapes, and all the while be maybe thinking about, is this for you? Is this for somebody in your life that you care about? And thinking about that story um, and how this might, you know, express a little something about you, about where you're from, or about what inspires you about this person if you want to give it to somebody else. Sometimes I get ideas just as I go, too. So you don't have to have it all planned out what you're doing yet. You might be thinking of somebody in your mind or thinking of yourself and then just kind of letting the ideas come. And just so everyone knows that there will be a recording and that link is going to be shared with everyone afterwards. So you can always go back in and watch it to follow along. Yeah, and I can do, um, you know, while depending on where everyone is, if everyone's kind of if a lot of people are working on their drawing, I can go back from the beginning too. if you want to see the very beginning stages. If anyone missed that, um, I can do that as well. So we're not, you know, this is uh, just the drawing side, and then you can you can start kind of drawing in ideas um, first, and then start adding color after you've kind of drawn it out, or you can just dive right into the color. So even the you know the colors in this this crown has. Has meaning everything in here um, has kind of special meaning so when you're creating yours maybe maybe think about the colors you choose think about the shapes you choose think about the um, images you choose hmm. Maybe, you know, it starts to, the pictures you draw start to kind of come to life into a story. And maybe it's a story um, about you and your background. I think I'm going to give mine to a friend that I have in my mind thinking about them and what inspires me about them. Think about different memories. And you can also use um, that extra paper. Let's see, did I switch that? The extra paper that when you cut out that square, you can add, uh, you can add more. So like um, on this one here, you know, use that extra to, to add more shapes at the top, which you can do. So that's where if you have um, the tape or glue can come in. So I could put like a, a diamond at the top of here or a circle. See if you can mix colors together. See what happens if I put this color on top of this color. Hmm. And Katie, we have uh, someone wondering about the context of when the Yoruba culture presented these crowns to their people. Was it during a special occasion or coming of age? 
Yeah. Any other sort of. I think this is really um, the crowns were kind of meant for royalty. So you often see, um, you know, you hear about kings wearing these crowns, and a lot of the, um, you know, the beads. A lot of the symbols in here are symbol of of royalty, but also of you know ancestry of of divine ancestry and um, and you know different symbols within the culture. So, but yeah, I think it's um, I think in terms when you hear about these Yoruba uh, crowns, you you hear about uh, the royalty <laughs> wearing them, you know. And they all, um, many of them have different symbols too. Some of them have birds on the top that has meaning. Some of them um, have kind of a veil over the front, which was, you know, the king and queen, you know, this idea that uh, for people not to look at them directly. And so each each one I imagine is is a bit different, but, but some of the symbols are sim uh, similar or the same. And this is uh, 19th century, I believe. Yeah, so if anybody would like um, feel free to add in the chat, like if you'd like me to kind of go over some of the, if you, you missed some of the first steps. I can go over that a bit. Again, if you would like, while I, while we work on our drawing, coloring. So yeah, I would say if you'd like a little more instruction on the, the first steps, uh, write that in the chat and we'll see if, if many of you do, then we can go back. So yeah, and then you can grab, you know, and grab some other pieces of paper here. And you can really kind of, if you want to change the shape of this, um, you can think about what you could add, like what more you could add to even like expand it out further. So for instance, if I were to add something at the top, what if you added some, some big kind of shape or symbol at the top? Like, I do love the idea of, of kind of like a bird at the top or something. Hmm. Maybe draw that out first before adding it. You could even add words if you want. If this, if this crown of, if the idea is kind of for protection, what kind of animals might you choose? Is there a certain animal that makes you think of protection or bravery or that ties to your culture? And we can just cut out these shapes and just add them. So then, you know, I could color that in, add that to the top. So this is going to go, this is actually, it works like a hat, right? And you can even add um, yarn coming down if you want to have something that attaches around um, that ties. And you could just keep adding to it, expanding it out. 
one way, if you don't have um, glue, what I love to do is just grab some tape and then, I don't know if you've ever done this, but kind of roll it so that it's sticky on all sides. That, and then oops, stick it on the back. Um, you can mix, you can, you know, mix other materials. So you could be doing this same uh, thing, the same kind of um, everything we did. You could be doing that with fabric, too, if you want to play with this, trying different materials. Just remember that you always want to start with a square. So I'm kind of blending, when I'm thinking about this person, I'm blending ideas that have to do with, you know, what inspires me about them, with kind of memories. Um, so you can kind of be thinking about a lot of things to create this story. And then of course you have the back too. And you have all of these fun other pieces, all these shapes you cut out, which you could add as well if you wanted to color those in and just keep expanding it out. So while I'm going, what do you think? Um, does anybody need a, any any more assistance on just the construction side of it? Have you seen? Let's see, I'll check the. Um, yes, I'm seeing from Jennifer. You can use uh, glue instead of tape. I do think though for for that first couple steps um, when you're taping the paper together and you're taping the back, uh, tape is going to work best for that. But anything that you add, you can glue. So all the decorations, uh, that can all be done with glue if you'd like. And then you just keep going and going and going until you have it filled out. And there's really no limit to uh, just how much you add. You can also make a um, you can make a, a a paper kind of a tie as well. So you can use yarn or string, anything you have, twine, rope, or you can use you can just take some of that paper that you have left over if you want. Or I kind of like just leaving it as this little this headpiece without a handle, but just saying if you'd like to just, you can just cut out two strips. And I'm going to cut it wide enough that I can fold it. This. 
fold it in half, and then you could glue that piece together or tape it. You could even decorate, add, you could decorate this too if you'd like, and then, and then you can kind of like, uh, wind the paper around your hand just to loosen, loosen it up a little bit because it's so stiff when it's just straight, but you can kind of loosen it up and tape the sides and even tape the bottom. So for instance, I could tape this side in here. And I could do the same, do another one on the other side, and then just tape these two together. You could add different materials too, like if you want to add a newspaper, doesn't have to be uh, just colors that you add. If you want to add scraps of paper for different uh, textures and patterns and colors, do that too. So we have just a couple more minutes. Um, and before, because I want to, uh, we'll go a couple more, more minutes just to, and of course, you know, this isn't, it's not about finishing. It's just about kind of getting, getting you started on some ideas for you to continue. Um, I'm, and just, you know, starting with a simple template of creating the crown and creating something wearable that you can wear on your head. There's really no, no limits to where you can go from there, especially when you have uh, some stories inspired by someone you care about or even by yourself to, to inspire your art. person I'm thinking about is an artist and does a lot of something called abstract art, which is just shapes and line colors. So I'm, I'm trying to add a bit of that in here too. And you could do something completely different on the back if you want. You could even write a story on the back side. It could all be words. It could be a poem. All right. Well, now that um, we've got the kind of the form, the drawing started, started the story started, and you have an idea. Um, I hope that you, I, I wish I could see ones and that you had, you had fun creating your work and, um, and if you give it as a gift, I'm sure they will, the person will love your, whatever it is that you created. And I'm going to pass it back over because we're about out of time, but, um, let me, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. joining us. Thank you for joining us today and a special thank you to our friends at LACMA for leading us in that amazing art workshop. We hope you enjoyed the program. If you would like to let us know how we did in this program, please fill out the survey that will be sent to all the participants at the end. Also, we're hosting creative storytelling workshops every other week until June, so be sure to check out the full schedule online at lacountylibrary.org slash LACMA programs. Also on this website are book lists if you want to read more about the themes presented in each workshop. Our Positive Parenting Librarian will remain in the event for 10 minutes after the program if you have any parenting questions you would like to post in the chat. You can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with the Positive Parenting Librarian. We will post a link to schedule a consultation in the chat again. And if you're interested in participating in more of our upcoming virtual programs, please visit us at lacountylibrary.org.